everyone. Good evening, Bar. I'll keep my bed buddy. Just check it, just to make sure you're there. How's everybody tonight? Perfect. Good. 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 Well, I, my name is Barb Monroe. I belong to the Peace Region Songwriters here in Dawson Creek. And uh, I'd like to welcome you to the final show of the season for 2018-19 uh, for the Home Roots Series. Uh, as you may know or not know, the Dawson Creek Art Gallery and Arts Council have been hosting these concerts since, I believe, 2010. And once again, we've had just a wonderful lineup. Have we not? Um, I'd just like to take a moment to thank um, all our generous sponsors, um, Province of BC Charitable Gaming Association, uh, the Northern Lights College uh, for providing accommodations for our artists, uh, the Dawson Creek Co-op for, refreshment, for refreshments for the evening. And I need a big round of applause. There's going to be a brief intermission halfway through tonight's show to stretch, refuel, and of course to buy a CD or two. Right, Ryan? <laughs> So now, without further delay, I'd like to introduce our feature artist uh, for this evening, evening uh, Ryan McNally. Uh, Ryan hails from rural Quebec, but he now calls Whitehorse Yukon his home. Uh, Northern Living has had quite an influence on Ryan's music, which he brings to audiences with an acoustic blues, jazz, and old-time flavor, is what I'm told. 2012, he debuted his album, Down Home, and 2015, uh, uh, he followed with Steppin' Down South. And he will have CDs at the back there um, later on. So please, please uh, have come take a look see for that. 2017, he was nominated for Blues Artist of the Year at the Western Canadian Music Awards. <laughs> and Ryan recently performed for Prince William and Princess Kate wow. during their visit to the YK. Wow. So we're in for a treat tonight. So whether he's playing solo or he's with his band, you're likely to find Ryan performing on the stage near you. And tonight we are privileged to have him here with us. So would you put your hands together and give a warm Dawson Creek Welcome to Ryan McNally. All right, thank you guys. Nice to see you all here. How's it going? Great. Good. 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 That's better now. Yeah. I'm good. play with a full band, but uh, for this Homebirds tour, this is my first time doing a tour like this, and uh, it's been really great so far, and uh, kind of gives me a chance to feature what I, what I do solo a lot, and I, I really study a lot of uh, old-time music and old blues and jazz, and been around uh, all over, traveling to visit people, and kind of take in as much as I can. And that's kind of what I'll feature here. Those are the, all the tunes I'll play for you tonight. <laughs> There's one called the Hard Road Blues. Oh, 
so much nice stuff around me, I really don't want to break anything. <laughs> <laughs> Are these concerts that go on in here, or do you have other stuff too? They occasionally like, started having some music okay. here too, yeah, actually. Right on. But this was like the first kind of thing that's Okay, yeah. right on. Yeah. We do lots of stuff in here. shop in Whitehorse called Hamilton and Son uh, Guitar Works and uh, every now and then uh, I work there not, not all that often but uh, when I'm in town and available I kind of go on road too much to have a steady job <laughs> uh, but apparently this is my job so I'm happy with that um, but uh, yeah this guitar that I'm playing is uh, just it's kind of a rare breed of guitar. It's, uh, it's made by Regal, and it, uh, but it's a Kingston Wurlitzer guitar, and it took me uh, probably almost over, just over six months to, of research to find out when it was made and uh, who made it and all this stuff, because uh, so many of these older guitar brands or older instrument uh, brands in the day, they would uh, license out their name or to other new companies that were trying to get into the instrument building business and uh, we would uh, you know license out their name and, and uh, their designs and all that and uh, yeah so that's the story of this one where is it from uh, where would have been made uh, i think the midwest of the states is where they were and how old would it be uh, this one's from the 30s yeah, yeah, it's yeah it really yeah. stands out yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a pretty weird guitar, actually. Pretty unique in its design and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Is that uh, super long? Um, where, the, where the pegs are at the top? This is so long. Is that, is that right part there? of the blues thing? Uh, like to have the slotted headstock? Is that what not you mean? That, not the, the slot so much, but the length of it. It's yeah. so long. Yeah, I don't know. Compared to most... That's, that's kind of common for a slotted style. Okay. You know, a design like that. But, uh, yeah, just the body shape and everything yeah. is a pretty weird one. It's electrified. <laughs> what kind of wood do they use to make the guitars? Because obviously you probably need a wood that's going to have a little bit of percussion or tone to it. Yeah. What kind of wood is it? Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what kind of wood is it. <laughs> okay. I wish I knew. And then, just one last question. The, the pickguard, is that tortoise shell? Uh, that's definitely a plastic. Plastic. Yeah. But it's called tortoise shell. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when you look it up in the catalog, they're going to call it tortoise shell. That's plastic tortoise. <laughs> yeah. So it's nice to, uh, and my, the fiddle I'm playing is, uh, I've done research on that, and it's uh, from the teens. You know, it's in the, like, oh, or something like that. It's made in France. Nice. And, uh, but it's like maple. Like. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not quite sure of the wood on that either. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously got to do more research. The research never stops, apparently. But uh, uh, this banjo is probably only uh, eight years old or something like that. Yeah, not old at all. It's made in Knoxville. Where I got it from a little shop down there. Sounds alright to me. I like it. Thank you. 
Texas Playboy Two Step. <laughs> yeah, I guess there was a band called the Texas Playboy. So jump <laughs> Thank you. 
that. Made me dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. see everybody's different take on it. This one's called uh, Black as Crow. Right. 
Try one of my own tunes for you now. Yeah. As I said, I play with a kind of a big band, and it's kind of funny to play play those tunes that I write for these guys. Uh, you know, I make uh, arrangements with the, there's a tuba and uh, mm -hmm. always a lot of horns and and uh, and a lot. There's a marching band kind of style bass drum in the band, so so trying to do these big loud shows and then all of a sudden doing it by yourself is like a huge, <laughs> <laughs> huge difference. But it's really fun to see how it works and everything, and, and uh, still have a lot of fun with it, that's for sure. And so uh, this is one of my tunes, this is uh, one I wrote called Colty. Somebody went in line, did my sight, did my day black at night. On my wrong, felt like right, they would know in this side. But I hit it down the road, with the weather suit my clothes. Down with a sweet lady, kind of drive for crazy, good tree like I should. She hit me high, light like me, hit me like fire. Man, boys, make it work like a song. How's everybody doing? 
And that's what he wrote, eh? Yeah. Like, I imagine he wrote a lot of songs. He did. Yeah. yeah, I just discovered all of his, uh, uh, his recorded library of Congress recordings. They were never really released on a, on a compilation or a vinyl or anything like that. It's, uh, those recordings are, you know, they're kind of hard to listen to, actually. <laughs> but the tunes and the playing is just uh, unbelievably awesome. You know, it's really great tunes. And he's actually doing uh, a bunch of tunes. It's really interesting because, you know, he, he released all uh, the stuff they, they marketed and everything was a really a lot of all the blues that he played. But uh, he did like some kind of uh, a couple tunes, like acapella tunes that were more like sea, sea shanty tunes yes. from, you know, almost like uh, Newfoundland style, you know, like, uh, and even uh, really obscure versions of uh, pop tunes, like really, you know, like Tin Pan Alley. You guys know Tin Pan Alley? That was a, it was almost like uh, not, now, like a lot of country music that you hear on the radio or anything is it's kind of all. A bunch of songwriters all getting together in a in a oh, boardroom yeah. or something. You know, Tin Pan Alley used to be like that in the twenties. Of you know, they they were just trying to get together and write the next jazz pop hit, and uh, and he did a lot of, uh, of uh, covers of these pop tunes, but they're really obscure. <laughs> the way that he does them, it's quite interesting to listen to the chords that he chooses and everything. That sounds nothing like the original. And so. So it's pretty cool to listen to all that stuff. It's a Library of Congress recording. Yeah, you can go on there too. Pardon me? You have to do it there. You have to listen to them there. No, there. Yeah, you can go on, on YouTube on. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's on, on. YouTube oh. has changed the world yeah. for all that stuff. So it's called Congress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The work has been done for everybody. They don't. Nobody has to go knocking on doors and uh, you know traveling around the world to hear all this uh, amazing music. They just go to go to the internet. <laughs>
short break. I'll get a, get a drink or something. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a drink of lemonade. thing for us is for kids to feel excited about science, to feel like it's accessible, it's fun and it's exciting, and that it's not something that you only do in the science lab once a week with one specific teacher. It's something that you do in everyday life with objects around you, uh, and it's something that is fun and inclusive and exciting and, and brings joy.
well, I don't know as it is really a band, but uh, we just get together and play together. Uh, so it, anytime uh, when people would come over to visit, we uh, would just pull out the instruments and start playing. Dad would be on the fiddle, um, Joanne, Levine, uh, Joanne on the piano, Levine on the guitar. Now, I was usually pretty small then. So anyway, Clem, uh, he learned to play the piano and well, he plays lots of things. Yeah, no, whenever we get together, it's just always been music. Uh, there's nothing like music. <laughs> Life wouldn't be the same without music. Saturday night free at the end of the month, please come out because we're always looking to see people and have audiences out and of course uh, entertainers too. So uh, last Saturday of the month. So what time? Uh, it starts, uh, the doors open at 6.30 and it's at 7 o'clock. And we have a sign up list and we have an MC for the night and it's just a good time. So uh, pretty low key but we always have a good time. Pardon me? Is it an open mic? Yeah, you betcha. So spoken word. Yes, we have poetry. poetry. We have, yeah, you betcha. We have like all kinds and that. Yeah, so it's just a word thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I'm I'm gonna hold back here and I'm gonna get the Ryan to take it from here. So let's get to the Quite a few home roots tours. Yeah. I've heard of him. Yeah. Yeah, he's a really amazing guitar player, and I met him actually while he was doing a home roots tour up in Yukon. And I think I met him in 2010, a long time ago. And uh, he's based out of Memphis. He's been living there for uh, for quite a long time. I'm not sure, like definitely over 20 years. Um, but he was uh, really instrumental in the 60s, uh, during the 60s folk revival. You know, he started out a lot of uh, fiddle festivals and folk festivals and really gave, gave a stage to a lot of these uh, rural artists that weren't necessarily getting a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, attention. And he hung out a lot with uh, Reverend Gary Davis and Furry Lewis specifically and uh, really picked their careers up and he uh, toured with them quite a lot and he definitely uh, learned a lot of guitar from them too. And uh, I've gone down to Memphis quite a few times to, to visit with Andy and, and just hang out and, and play guitar together. And, and uh, when I was down there he taught me this tune, it's uh, one of uh, Furry Lewis's numbers. It's called uh, The Ballad of Casey Jones. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Captivating place to say the least, but uh, but I'm originally from just outside of Montreal and spent uh, quite a long a lot of time in Montreal too. Really uh, so close to my heart, that city and uh, that area. Uh, and I've spent a lot of time in uh, on uh, Bishop Street at uh, Grumpy's. Everybody, anybody ever been to Grumpy's? <laughs> it's at a little bar uh, downtown, and every Thursday there's a really great full-time jam. Uh, is this in Whitehorse or? This is in Montreal, oh, sorry. Montreal. Yeah. 
really great uh, gym there every Thursday. And uh, when I was uh, when I was spending a lot of time there a few years ago, uh, I was hosted by a friend of mine, uh, Glenn Patterson, who was uh, just finishing his uh, musicology degree in uh, McGill, and so I was just kind of glued to this guy because he was just it's like you know we were. You couldn't get him enough beer, and he was just spouting out amazing history of all these amazing musicians and people. And it really kind of tied a lot of this, uh, you know, just uh, folk music. It, you know, the more you learn of all these different styles and all the history and all the different cultures, you really realize how how connected it all is. If uh, you know, so it really kind of had a really cool. Uh, it was really inspiring to hang out with him, just because it uh, it really gave me a lot of inspiration to, to discover a lot more and to uh, just to feel a lot closer to all these different places that, uh, you know, maybe you've never been there, but, uh, you know, these people that, this music, you know, not, it might not be marketed that way to the music industry or something, but, uh, you know, a lot of it's really connected. Uh, but he taught me this next thing that I'll play for you now. Uh, this is a tune by uh, Roscoe Holcomb, and uh, it's a tune called The Hills of Mexico. This one's all about a train robbery.
country in the mountains. Oscar. 
They're definitely not uh, old at all. You know, harmonicas get really gross after a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think they, they stand the test of time. But I just learned actually uh, recently how to uh, tune harmonicas, which has been saving me a whole lot of money. <laughs> so what, were you just re buying new ones? Or? I was doing that, and now uh, I've been uh, tuning them, which is, uh, it takes really, really long time and a lot of patience, but uh, you know, you get one read and it's like, oh, half an hour's gone by and like, it's still not <laughs> You know, so it takes quite a while.
Thanks in the audience. Uh, that was a tune uh, in half Spanish tuning. You call that good, uh, half Spanish what? Tuning. They call it Spanish tuning because uh, you, you, you back in the, I guess whenever the tune Spanish Fandango was really popular, you needed to tune to open G. But instead of calling it open G, they just call it Spanish tuning. All right. And half Spanish tuning is when you only tune half the guitar to open G. Oh. No. But that's what they call it. And it took me a while to even know what Spanish tuning was. Everybody yeah. was talking about the Spanish tuning. Spanish. 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 Yeah, Spanish.